Okay, what I'm going to show you right now is a great little program called Graphing Calculator by Pacific Tech. I highly recommend it for teachers and students who want a good graphing calculator for their computer. It's real easy to use and it has some really cool features that I'm going to share with you right now. One of the things I like to show students is the effects of A, B, and C on the quadratic. Now right here I have your standard quadratic y equals x squared plus n. Now n is set down here on this slider and I set the n values to go from negative 10 to positive 10 within 40 steps. So basically what I can do is just slide this value right now n is 0. This is the graph of y equals x squared plus 1 and as I change the n value you notice what it's doing to the parabola. It shifts the parabola up and the highest value I can make n is 10. That's what I set it at. And the lowest value I can make n, my constant value, is negative 10. So basically, uh, what the constant does is it just shifts the parabola up and down. When, when I make the constant value positive, it moves up. There's a positive value of 8. When I move it down, it shifts it down. So that's what the constant does. Now what I'm going to do is um, I want to get rid of the constant and I'm going to put, let's show what this graph looks like. This is y equals x squared. That's our standard parabola. And now I'm going to put n in as the value of a, as the coefficient of the quadratic term. And um, let's put our n up to a half. And you can see as I increase the value of a, make it bigger, it, it makes the parabola skinnier, like we talked about. And if I make it uh, smaller, here's our standard parabola at uh, an a value of 1. This is an a value of a half. Um, and here's an a value of 0. What happened to the parabola? Well, it's no longer a parabola. It's y equals 0, and that's right on the x-axis, which is why you can't see it. If I make it negative 0.5, it opens down, and negative 1, and negative 2, and etc. So what I'll do is I'll just put the slider on automatic, and you can see what A does. It's just bouncing from negative 10 to positive 10. If you make it negative, it opens down. If you make it positive, it opens up. The, the bigger the A value, the thinner it gets. And if you make it a fractional value, then it gets wider. All right, so now let me show you the weird thing that the b value does. Let's do y equals x squared plus nx plus 3. Now I'll set n to be 0 at first, so there is no linear term now. It's just y equals x squared plus 3. That's what it would look like. Now I'm going to introduce a b value. This is a b value of 1. And notice the, the axis of symmetry moved over. As I let this thing go from negative to positive, you can see how b affects the graph. Notice the y-intercept isn't changing. The y-intercept is stuck at 3, so that part stays fixed. But the vertex just bounces around from the left side to the right side. And if you were to follow the vertex, the weird thing about this, it too follows a parabola the vertex follows a parabolic curve. So that's kind of interesting. But that's the effect on B. It's really kind of hard to describe unless you've actually seen it. But B will definitely cause your parabola, the axis of symmetry, to shift right or left. When it's at zero, it's right on the y-axis. When it's positive, it seems to go left. When it's negative, it seems to go right. Now that all changes if you put a negative in here. Now when we give it a positive, it moves to the right when it opens down, and negative, it moves to the left. So that's a little confusing there, whether it's going to move right or left, because when it opens down, positive moves it to the right. When it opens up, a, a positive B value will move the vertex to the left. Hope this helps you understand the effects of A, B, and C on the graph, though.